Revitalizing cultural burning practices, New Mexico and beyond is a free virtual event that's going to be highlighting the long-standing relationship between American Indian cultures and fire. Crystal spoke with the director of the Indigenous Peoples Burning Network to find out more. Joining us this morning, we have Mary Huffman with the Indigenous Peoples Burning Network. She's the director. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mary. Uh, super excited about this uh, the talk that we're going to have because uh, it, it really dives deep into the culture um, and, and the history of the Indigenous peoples here in the state. But it also gives us a chance to kind of get a sneak peek of it as well for ourselves. Before we get into a virtual event that you guys have coming up, tell me about the Indigenous Peoples Burning Network. The Indigenous Peoples Burning Network is a, is a support network among Native American communities who are revitalizing their traditional fire cultures in today's context. You see, when European settlers and, and colonists um, arrived, as well as the Spanish explorers, they found this beautiful, um, well-maintained landscape, and they thought it was just there, that was the wilderness. But in fact, Native people had been tending those landscapes with fire for thousands of years. So, um, as that uh, culture declined, there, there is a need for Native people to get together and exchange knowledge with one another to revitalize those practices and, and keep our community safe. Uh, tell me why the, the network was developed. Were they hoping to get the message out to not only Indigenous people, but also to other cultures? The Nature Conservancy started burning in the 1960s, and we were burning to take care of plants and animals on properties that we cared for. But as we developed more and more partnerships, um, we got together with the U.S. Forest Service and the Department of Interior fire agencies and realized that, in fact, Indigenous voices were not well represented. And that ancient knowledge, those well-honed practices in, in many of our landscapes is super valuable. And Native people have a desire to maintain their cultures in perpetuity. So it was a great match. And um, the network is led by a group of cultural practitioners who are Indigenous from across the United States. And um, it's growing fast. I want to take a step back into history right now. Tell me why the cultural burning among Indigenous peoples was actually decreased. Yeah, I think two major influences contributed to that. The first would be the diseases that came along with the explorers and, and the colonists from Europe. Um, indigenous people in the Americas had no immunity to diseases like smallpox, measles, and up to 90% of the population died. So there was this incredible devastation of native populations across the country. And of course, if you lose 90% of your people, your culture uh, suffers in, in many dimensions. Absolutely. The second, the second piece is really that uh, pioneers and, and others who were bringing a farming economy to our nation really had a different view of fire. Fire was seen as a threat and it was a particular threat to the nation's wood supply. We needed wood to develop the country and so people started stamping out wildfires. They started even stamping out indigenous burning so that indigenous people were imprisoned, they were fined, they were even shot at for trying to maintain their traditional practices. As you mentioned, obviously at that point uh, in period of uh, time, it was deemed uh, wrong for them to be burning as much, uh, but there are benefits to the cultural burning. Can you tell me about that? There certainly are benefits, and there are benefits not only to Native people themselves, but to, to um, those of us who are not Indigenous. And for, for Indigenous peoples, those benefits might include um, food security, um, so good supplies of Native foods, um, good production of berries, acorns, deer, elk, and so on, um, medicinal plants, building materials, things to weave with. And then, of course, there are just the arts and the ceremonial purposes um, that relate to burning and fire maintained landscapes. For the rest of us, cultural burning really contributes to watershed health, forest health, um, community safety, and, and those kinds of benefits. Tell me how Indigenous peoples are actually increasing the cultural burning right now. There really are two pathways that Indigenous people are using and, and have used for a long time to maintain those practices and, and increase the prominence of cultural burning. Um, firefighting jobs are important. Firefighting jobs are important to Native people. They're important to, to the rest of us. And they're good jobs. 
And so part of the desire of Native people to stay involved with fire is to contribute to our firefighting community. Um, and these people know their landscapes really well. Um, they are outdoor people. They, they know their homelands where they have lived since time before anyone can remember. Um, but the other pathway is really more uh, through studying with their elders. So we might hear um, in our event from people who studied fire from their grandmothers, their grandfathers, who then studied for from generations, hundreds of generations before them. So there's this deep well of knowledge and practice that um, indigenous people develop and share over time. And so when you sit with your great grandmother, your grandmother, who's approaching 100 years old, who started burning before colonization, um, and her, her relatives, it, uh, it's quite an amazing thing. And so people are recovering, and they're making really concerted efforts to do that. I know there's a lot more to cover on this topic. We have about 15 seconds left on this interview. Can you give me details about the virtual event coming up? Oh, yes. This is going to be a rare and wonderful opportunity to interact with some of the cultural Bernies who really are leading the way um, in revitalization of cultural burning. Margot Robbins is a Yurok woman, a basket weaver, the head of the Cultural Fire Management Council. Renee Romero is um, a fire leader of the Taos Pueblo, and they'll be moderated by Lindsay Kwam, a Zuni person who has helped the Santa Clara Pueblo recover from the Las Conchas fire. Okay. You can find more information at nature.org slash New Mexico, New Mexico, one word. Perfect. I'll be there with you as in the audience. Mary Huffman, once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.